So I'm going to go over a few of the uh, ChemQuest mole problems, not all of them. Uh, we will continue to work on this for quite some time. So if you got them all right that I go over today, that's great. If not, correct them. This takes time for some students, and the only way to get good at it is to practice. So if you're not going to actually struggle through and do the work, you're probably not going to get these right. But if you get started on a problem, at least then when we go over it, I can help you get to the end. So the only way to become a good problem solver is to solve a lot of problems. So that's what we will do. So if you look at the mole map, as I call it, that's been provided, it tells you how you're going to convert from grams of a substance, mass of a substance, to moles. And you're going to use the molar mass of that substance from the periodic table. So the periodic table provides you with all the masses of one mole. Okay, so if you put the unit grams on any of these numbers, that's the mass of a mole of those atoms. So typically, when you're working book problems, you just round to the nearest whole number for most of them. Carbon is 12, nitrogen is 14, 16, 19, 4. When you get to something like chlorine, you really do need to at least put in 35.5. Sulfur, you'd leave at 32. Phosphorus, you'd make 31. Hydrogen, we put in as 1. We don't want to get too carried away with detailed masses because they're practice problems. They're not necessary. So let's look at your first set of problems. So if you got these right, you're in good shape, and if not, correct them. In class, we did not go over all of them. Some students were getting them, others were not. So just know that this is a long process, and we're going to weave in not only our formula writing, but the math. And we just continue to weave these together until you get it. So here, you're asked to convert everything that we give you to moles in these first set of problems. So you've got that many grams of C6H6. You go to your calculator, and you want to be able to put these molar masses in pretty quickly. So I am going to open my parentheses, and I can see that I have six moles of carbon, so I'm going to glance at the periodic table, and that's 12 grams per mole, so 6 times 12 plus, and hydrogen is 1 gram per mole, so I'm just going to put in plus 6, and I get my 78 grams per mole. My units of grams and my substance cancel, leaving me with about 2.56 moles. If your numbers are different here because of a different molar mass, don't let that confuse you. That's not a big deal. If we move on to question number two, it's the same type of format. We've got atoms that we're trying to get to moles. So let me stop a second so we would have the board available in the classroom. So let me write down. So if you are in grams and you are trying to get to moles, and the abbreviation for mole is M-O-L, you will use the molar mass. And if you have number of particles, and those would be molecules or atoms right now, those are the most common, then we use 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd to convert. So when you're looking, if you are simply going from atoms to moles, you're using Avogadro's number. Particles to moles, moles to particles. Okay. So I'll bring this back up um, in my explanations. Here, you're going from grams to moles. So to get from grams to moles, that's always the molar mass. Okay? So to get the molar mass of NO2, clear this. I've got one nitrogen, so I'm going to punch in 14. That's the mass of nitrogen on your periodic table. Then I'm going to plus two oxygens, and each oxygen mole is 16 grams per mole, and that gives me my molar mass of 46 grams per mole. So grams to mole uses the molar mass, atoms to moles uses Avogadro's number. Okay. So you had 
molecules to moles. This up, you're still using Avogadro's number. Okay. So you have grams to moles, molecules to moles. Down here, you're asked to convert everything to grams. So again, looking at your mole map, which you may have on your homework in front of you, kind of stick it up here in the corner. You're going to start with moles, convert to grams, so you're going to use the molar mass. Now, here, your molar mass was on the bottom because you were ending up with moles. Remember, the conversion factor is the same. There are 28 grams in a mole. Whether you flip it up or down depends on your units canceling. That's your dimensional analysis. If you don't remember your dimensional analysis, there is a review video in the folder. You have to make sure you're clear on how you're using it. That This was the whole purpose of learning dimensional analysis that we got to this you did not have to think about it. Moles have to cancel, leaving you with grams. Your nitrogen molar mass came from 2 times 14. Okay. So here is another calculation. So if you've only got 0 .005 moles of nitrogen, you have this many grams. You have fewer grams here because you have fewer moles. To the negative third power is smaller. For number three, 5,000 atoms. Now you've got to go through two conversions. So let's look. If you have to go through two conversions, so you're starting with particles, atoms, you have to first use Avogadro's number to get to moles and then the molar mass to get to grams. Two conversions. So starting with atoms, you know you have to have the unit of atoms down here. has to cancel. The only number you can ever put on words like atoms and molecules would be Avogadro's number. So Avogadro's number of atoms is a mole of those atoms, and that's carbon. And then a mole of carbon, based on the mass on the periodic table, is 12 grams. So two conversions, leading you to 9.96 times 10 to the negative 20th. Last one we're going to go over. Okay, because we wanted to get the basics down, so we did some clicker questions in class. Okay, so they do get some practice, but when I meet with when I meet with you next virtual, we'll practice these together. So molecules okay, to moles to grams, following the same pattern. The only way to get from molecules to moles is Avogadro's number. The only way to get from moles to grams is the molar mass. If you're still not sure where that molar mass is coming from, if you look at your formula, you've got one mole of carbon on the periodic table, that's 12, and then you've got two moles, bring this into the light, of oxygen, and that's 16 grams per mole, and that gives you your 44 grams per mole. So these problems were more difficult, and we are going to wait to go over those until next time. So if you did well on those, that's fine. They're a little more challenging. Okay? So now let's look at mole homework number two. Same mole map, example problems. So we went over the first four. Okay? So how many grams of silver are in 0.04 moles? So in order to go from moles to grams, you use the molar mass. And you certainly could simply have given me, uh, where's your silver, 108 grams is perfectly fine. When you write your final answer, you need to make sure that you are putting a unit and the identity of the substance, grams of silver. Okay. So then you can see I wrote myself a note that we stopped with these four problems. So now you're going from moles, okay, to grams again, so molar mass. So once you do enough of these, you should have no difficulty, but it takes that practice, and you need to make sure that you're setting them up correctly. Now we want to go from grams to moles. So you're doing the same conversion. You're still using that part of the mole map that says if you want to go from grams to moles, you're using the molar mass. That's the 
symbol for molar mass. So using lead's molar mass, 20.50 grams is 0.98 moles. Okay. Let me double check the math on that. For some reason that looks strange. 20. 0.5 divided by 207 approximately. Yep, I thought that was off. That's 0 0.098. Okay. And then for number four, you're going all the way. So if you looked up at your mole map, here you are in number four, starting with grams, and you want to get to atoms. So you've got grams. Use the molar mass to get to moles. Use Avogadro's number. Like I said, not everyone needs that mole map. Most people use it in the beginning, and then they clearly see that I've got to have grams. Um, the only number that makes any sense to put is the molar mass, so off of the periodic table, and then Avogadro's number. Okay. So these four problems... So the next time, if you look on your calendar, you do have a quiz. Now, of course, I will review with them in class, and I will either post that video or I will review with you um, when we meet on our Zoom meeting. So the only types of problems you're looking at being able to do are the first eight on homework number one and the first four on homework number two. So the rest of these get a little more complicated and we will work them, but you need to build up your confidence first with the basic problems. So check your homework and be prepared to go over problems during our next Zoom meeting.